Hey everyone, we are going to discuss now some pathologies and conditions that we see in our um, neonates and we're going to start that discussion with um, something that um, we see fairly often, a patent ductus arteriosus and the description for that is a special passage that remains open during the fetal stage Proper, to properly route blood between the infant and the mother fails to close after birth. This condition is not immediately life-threatening. It's diagnosed by comparing two blood gases, the normal ABG from the brachial or radial artery compared to one from the umbilical artery catheter that is considered the preductal and postductal ABGs. If the PO2 values are greater than 15 millimeters of mercury apart, then a PDA is um, present. Um, we uh, care plan that by uh, recommending the administration of endocin or endomethacin, and that is a drug that can be administered to promote spontaneous closure of the duct, and surgery is required if the duct remains open. So they are going to be referred to um, pediatric cardiology um, to be monitored and to be treated. The next condition is diaphragmatic hernia. The diaphragm fails to grow over completely and leaves an open gap between the abdominal cavity and the chest cavity. This allows the large bowel and abdominal contents to shift into the chest cavity with the lungs, which can seriously threaten ventilation. Uh, that is care planned using surgery um, that is required to correct it. Until the surgery can occur, low vent pressure should be used to avoid hemodynamic collapse. The way we don't uh, negatively affect the cardiac output and venous return any more than we have to. Uh, we see that on the x-ray and you can see usually on the left side the bowel will be up in um, the left side causing a tracheal shift away from the affected side because we know that things that occur um, outside the lung is going to cause that trachea to shift away. So that's diaphragmatic hernia and the um, treatment is surgery. The next condition we're going to discuss is coronal atresia. This condition is where one or both nasal passages or nares are underdeveloped and fail to grow open. Since the baby is an obligate nose breather, the infant cannot breathe during feeding and may become apneic and cyanotic. This may require the nurse or the therapist to flick the baby's feet or rub their back to stimulate them and hopefully they will recover. And then, um, so what we have to do is place a a tube feeding uh, in place so we can uh, give the baby the nutrition needed. We may have to use um, a, um, a um, oral um, obturator to, in order to uh, keep the, the airway, um, or, or I'm sorry, an oral pharyngeal airway in order to keep the mouth open uh, because the baby's naturally going to try to breathe through the nose. but. If, that, if they're unable to, then we're going to have to um, find a way to, to allow them to ventilate and oxygenate. Um, so the treatment for that is surgical opening of the nares, and that needs to be corrected as soon as possible. So we, we test for that. The nurse can take a feeding a tube and try to um, afford it down each nares to see if there is an occlusion or if it's patent and open. So usually there'll be at least one nair affected, there may be both, so um, that's the best way to, um, to check to see if you can pass a catheter or a, a, a tube um, down the, the nair, or uh, if not, then we need to get a care plan and with the team started in order to get that surgically corrected. Um, tetralogy of Fallot is our next condition. This is a um, misshapen heart. It's characterized by an overriding or aorta and a pronounced um, right ventricular hypertrophy. On the x-ray, we see 
a heart that looks like a boot shape or a stocking shape. Um, and the, uh, the treatment for that, like many congenital heart um, uh, disorders, is surgery. Uh, we're going to uh, ask for an echocardiogram to uh, confirm diagnosis. The next condition we're going to discuss is meconium aspiration. The fetus uh, is exposed to meconium or fecal matter that was likely floating in the amniotic fluid. Once uh, the infant is delivered, the meconium can be inhaled. Uh, treatment for that is progressive, consistent bronchial hygiene. We will have to use a, a bulb syringe to uh, clean the mouth and then the nose. We may have to intubate the baby to do a good deep suction with the suction catheter. So uh, we need to clear that airway. We may have to do percussion and postural drainage. There may be have to may have to be a um, antibiotic ordered in order to get that um, meconium aspiration cleared and to combat or to treat any aspiration pneumonia that may may result. The next condition is BPD, bronchopulmonary dysplasia. This condition involves a multi-system failure, most likely due to long-term exposure to positive pressure ventilation started immediately after uh, birth. Uh, care planning for that just includes treating the symptoms and hoping that it improves. The next condition we're gonna discuss is IRDS, Infant Respiratory Distress Syndrome. The infant is born with underdeveloped lungs. Specifically, alveoli are closed and are underdeveloped. This is most likely caused from being born prematurely, but may be present in full-term infants as well. We know that uh, the baby is considered preterm if it's born before the end of the 37th week. The baby can survive if born as early as 26 weeks. Um, you may hear of an instance occasionally where the child is born even earlier than that and survives, but um, usually um, 26 to 28 weeks, uh, they can apply surfactant to decrease surface tension in the lung and um, to help the lungs to expand and contract normally. So surfactant therapy is administered by installation directly to the lungs. The surfactant promotes alveolar pliability and quickly increases the alveolar's ability to participate in gas exchange. If the surfactant is not helpful, further invest investigation with chest uh, radiology is indicated. So we want to uh, watch our peak pressures with the RDS. We may have to place the baby on mechanical ventilation and in pressure control mode to, uh, to try to minimize uh, barrel trauma. Um, so the, we treat those symptoms. It's uh, the same as adult respiratory distress syndrome as far as what we see uh, in the lung with um, some pulmonary edema that ha needs to be cleared. So positive pressure um, can be useful in treating IRDS. The next, um, the next pathology we're going to um, discuss is a clogged ET tube. That's more of a, a condition or occurrence. This may occur if the meconium aspiration is present. So never try to clear a clogged ET tube or suction, suction catheter on an infant. Simply retrieve a new one. So extubate and reintubate in that situation. Um, the next condition is a pneumothorax. If suspected, first perform transillumination. If there is a halo pattern shown or fingers of light can be seen, this is normal, so there's probably not a pneumothorax. Otherwise, a chest x-ray should be done to confirm a pneumothorax. Um, if there is one confirmed, we're going to insert chest tubes and relieve that and allow the lung to re-expand. The next condition is pulmonary interstitial emphysema. This condition develops in a newborn's lungs during positive pressure ventilation. Usually mechanical ventilation is in use, and the higher the PIB and the PEEP, the more likely that PI will develop. There is no surefire treatment. Most involves keeping the ventilatory pressures low. Don't over distend the alveoli. 
Be sure to lower PIP when compliance improves, otherwise tidal volume will rise and the alveoli will become stretched, which could cause pie to develop. So good candidate for high frequency oscillatory mechanical ventilation. Um, that way we can uh, use those tiny breaths and faster rates in order to uh, ventilate the patient. Okay, so that's just some interesting pathologies and conditions that we may see with our um, infant patients. Uh, remember that uh, we try to keep the therapeutic FIL2 range between 30 and 60%. Try to use the minimum FIL2 that uh, maintains the blood gas. If you have to use CPAP or PEEP, try to start at a pressure of two and a range of two to five is a common CPAP pressure for an infant and definitely don't exceed eight centimeters of water. Um, and a high flow, high humidity cannula is getting really popular for use to help oxygenate uh, the infant patient. And uh, it does splint the airway open using the high flow and then we can use minimal FIO2s. We may be able to use a less FIO2 with the CPAP or the high flow nasal cannula because we do have that uh, flow available to stent a splint open the airway. So that may allow us to use lower FIO2s. Um, we can also um, uh, make sure that we are constantly monitoring our patient, make sure their vital signs are within range their ABG is within range. The ABG results are similar to an adult except for that PO2 is going to um, be closer to 60 to 80 for a normal range. Our heart rate's gonna be um, 110 to 160, a little higher in the infant as a normal. Anything over 170 needs oxygen therapy and our respiratory rate range is going to be from 30 to 60 breaths per minute in the infant. So thanks for joining us. Be sure to check out our study group, study group uh, page and subscribe so you can get uh, notifications when there is new, uh, new recordings released. So thanks for listening in. I hope it's helpful. Have a great day.